All right, guys, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and hit that bell. Today, we're going to be talking about how you can make animations for 2D pixel art in DreamSpace 4 and other stuff like that. It's really interesting, actually, because it's actually, it, it's so easy that I think this might be the, just because of this alone, it might be the best pixel art program, um, at least that I, that I would prefer using, because I always hated making sprites in order to uh, do animations so you'll notice that the animations for a walk cycle this is not a complete walk cycle it's really close together and none of these are actually on linear what you want to do you don't even really need three of these but if you want to make it have more animations in your walk cycle you can but you always want these to be closer together and you can even expand it if you need to uh, to make it uh, seem more um, more pleasing if that makes sense Whenever you're animating, just press L1 and X on the keyframe, and then what you can do is the specific parts that are the animations that you need, you can actually click them all and then press R, R2 or L2, and then you can like rotate this. The only thing is, is before you do that, you might want to turn on grid snap and make sure it's on the settings uh, 1 by 32. That way it kind of moves, um, you know, snapped in place. And you can kind of see how this can make things um, a lot easier to actually animate. In fact, before you actually start animating with the keyframe, you can actually click all these and link it together. So that way the whole leg is actually a part um, of something. So like what I'm actually saying, let me actually show you what I mean. So if I was to press L1 and X, let me pause this on my spear, you'll notice I have all these objects linked together, making it to where everything moves together. So while I'm animating, if these are all linked together, if after I press the uh, link button or whatever, which would look like this, the group button, and then I tried animating it, it all moved together. making things a lot easier to animate. Um, so that's why I believe this program is powerful for animating 2D art. Um, again, uh, you don't need too much animations for your walk cycle, you just really need two. Let's go into the logic of how you can actually do this. Go to the control sensor, go to left stick, pull out an on-off switch, put this left sticks into the control switch, uh, sensors, uh, or the on-off switches, um, on off port on the left side and on the right side put this into restart timeline of a timeline with your walk animation in it and also into a node and the nodes out port into the power of this timeline so if you have any other animations like attack animations you'll want to have this node turn this on and then a keyframe turn this off for the walk animation. And then left stick is just into the import of this on off switch. Uh, I have this on possessable and force possession. And then I also have a camera pointer right here, which works off of this camera right here. You can also look at my 2D game tutorial. There's tutorials up here if you want to click those. And they'll most likely revolve around 2D pixel art. So here's what my one of my attack animations looks like. You see it's real simple. Just one swing, you know, real simple. And then an effect. And then here's what another animation looks like. So let's say if you wanted to attack in the air, it's basically the same thing. Just real simple. So you can probably see I can get pixel art done really quickly. Let me go ahead and back out real quick because I did a lot of editing to the edits. Just so you guys can see that. Um... This is good ground to work upon. Still got to work on this part right here. It's still a little hard, but it works, you know. 
From there, what I would actually do is make obstacles. Like I wouldn't worry about level design just yet. I would make obstacles. You like sort of, you kind of sort of see what I'm doing right now with the obstacles. If you're to like level design a 2D stage, I'd make obstacles like Mario, if that makes sense. Then after you make maybe enough obstacles, I would probably see how many obstacles are in a typical Mario stage. Then I'd start working on level design. So that way you don't have to um, worry about that anymore, if that makes sense. You could just probably make a game really quickly if you uh, use this method that I just said right here. So the reason we use an on-off switch right here is because if you were to move left and right without it being full power run, it'd move, make the animation walk really slowly. So that's why we're using an on-off switch right there if you wanted to uh, learn know how to fix that kind of a problem. And I did delete the puppet in here and I put a sculpture in here and I labeled that sculpture um, whatever I needed the label for this character to be that way whenever I needed him to be hurt by the enemy that's detecting friend by that hitbox right there you can look on my hitbox tutorial um, this sculpture that is not collidable and is invisible is what is being uh, detected. So this is technically our hurt box. And that's our hit box, that green thing over there. Label a friend, both. And then whatever damage amount you need for the hearts, I have one damage. Then you can look up my other tutorials. I mean, I'm, I mean, I really didn't have to um, give this rundown, but I wanted to anyway. It's because it's real interesting. I know this is probably um, something a lot of people want to do. So, and it's as simple as that. Um, shouldn't be anything that I left out. If there is, then um, you can let me know. But this is my process for making 2D games. Real easy nothing too hard to it and you just look up my 2d sprite tutorial if you guys need to learn how to make the pixels themselves to make the characters then i also have the 2d character tutorial already up too with that one i am using uh the text displayer but in my new pixel tutorial it'll show you how you can use um sculptures to make these um these pixels instead of uh, the text display. The reason why uh, the text display is harder because you have to manually come in here and change the color. With the sculpture, you can just change the color on the outside without having to open up anything and then go here, you know. So, and then you can also use coat mode on the sculpture, which is right here. All right, hope this helps you guys out with animating a 2D game. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, hit that like button, and hit that bell, and tell me what you guys think. Peace.